from college football, but is responsible for so much more than I think people give it credit for, dating back all the way to before the Great Depression, back when the Carnegie Foundation decided it would go ahead and take a look at how much money college football was responsible for in 1929. They published a 383-page report that covered the growth of college sports, right? Not necessarily just focusing on college football, but on college sports. And what they found was more than 50% at most institutions of the revenue generated came from football. 1926 or 1927, Alabama made $150,000 from its athletics program. $72,000 of that came from college football. $60,000 for playing in the Rose Bowl. Cal made $486,162 1927. Football was responsible for $457,016. Harvard turned a $131,000 profit from football revenue that was $429,000. The authors of this report said at the time, football carries the bulk of the monetary burden. And we can see how really when folks have tried to get rid of football from their universities, they have been almost unable to function. Michigan State tried it, didn't work. Tulane tried it, not only did it not work, they played in a bowl game last year and play in the American Conference right now. Tad Foote tried to do it in Miami. Jimmy Johnson won out, and they won national titles to show for it. We continue to roll through this thing and see year after year, the money gets bigger. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution did a study in 1974 across 15 of the South's major universities and found that several of them turned more than a million dollars in profit in the 70s. You know, back when everything was a nickel and everything was a quarter and, you know, there was no such thing as the internet. You know, back in the good old days or so, the people tell me, even then, football was responsible for the bulk of all of the money, or some to all of the money, that you actually received as a university. Last, what, 2018, so not last year, the year before last, LSU reported $145 million in revenue. Now, it said 87 million of that came from football, right? But we know just by taking a look at the contracts that the SEC has with ESPN CBS that football was probably responsible for close to 100 million of that $145 million. And this is at a university with an outstanding baseball program, right? With a pretty doggone good basketball program, and so on and so forth, right? We continue to look at how much money is spread across these universities from television revenue. And it's one of the reasons why Bob Bowlesby is always going to be between a rock and a hard place whenever he has to answer questions about why does Oklahoma have so many 11 a.m. kickoffs? Because that's where Fox put the game. I don't get to tell them where to put the game as long as I'm taking the money. And we all need to take the money. Not we want to take the money. We need to take the money. Because if we don't take the money... Some of these institutions will cease to function in the way that they have been functioning. The way that the NCAA tournament has been viewed is really as a big financial hit, right? $600 million the NCAA doles out annually. They're only going to be able to dole out about $275 million this year after reaching into their emergency fund for another $50 million. So everybody's coming up short. But if you don't play football, and if you don't play football on time, the bill is still due. And I get that's why guys like Mike Gundy are coming out saying, I want to get back to doing what we do on May 1st. But I submit to you, as much as we need sports, and we do need it, as much as we need to be able to go out and entertain ourselves and patronize our local businesses, go to movie theaters, do more than sit at home and read Salman Rushdie's Kishat. We also need to stay alive and we need to protect life because that's what's most important. Everybody's hurting, right? We're in the middle of this thing where we look 
where we could see kind of sort of the curve kind of flattening out. And then you get the news that, hey, look, probably going to have to have some controls in measure until we get to a vaccine, which is anywhere between 12 and 18 months away, depending on who you talk to on what day. But what they're doing in South Korea and walking this tightrope, I think, is where everybody's going to be in the fall. South Korea right now, they're trying to get their baseball up and going. The KBO has been playing intramural games among its eight teams. They expect to go through a six-game exhibition starting on April 21st. But all of this is contingent on nobody getting sick and nobody coming down with the virus or testing positive. But they have such precautions in place as if you try to walk into any place without a mask on, they ask you politely to leave. Everybody gets a forehead temperature. If your temperature exceeds 100.4, you go home, they shut down the business. And across the KBO, they have put in place, if anybody gets sick, everything stops for two weeks, minimum, period, full stop. But they're willing to play this tightrope because they understand what everybody understands. You have to try to be as capable and honest and forthright about living life while also protecting life as you can. But the way that that gets done means that everybody's got to be pulling in the same direction. And what I have learned so far is that not everybody is willing to do that. And that's why I'm really just behind Mayor Bynum in this and saying, hey, can't trust y'all to do it on your own, so I'm just going to have to go ahead and put this in. Now, also, we live in a country that is not a police state, and we have these things called the Bill of Rights that need to be respected at all times, right? Some of us, some of our ancestors actually died for these rights. We have to respect them and protect them. At the same time, that means you have to take some personal responsibility for your actions. Wearing the mask is not necessarily about protecting you as much as it is about having respect for the people around you. If you are sick, do not go to work and then have employers that understand you're trying to protect everybody. Because that used to be just kind of a thing that you understood if somebody was out, hey, I don't want to get anybody else sick because this thing is contagious or is that person not wanting to work? And in this country where we have such a zeal to work, these things are counterintuitive to us. We don't really see it as what we're here to do. We're here to work. And we're finding out that not working affects our identity in a way that I'm sure no one expected all of the folks at all of the times in this world to be affected. I get it. We all want to work. We all want to play. We all want life as it was. But for life to go on and for football to run and for the money to get turned back up, Stay where you are, ride out April, wait and see what public health officials have said, and then we can continue to hope for what we hope will be great sports in the fall of all stripes and all kinds. I'm telling you, at the very least, 2021 is going to be a hell of a sports year.